Hello everyone, uh, I am Professor Giles from the Department of Mathematics and Statistics from San Diego State University and I will give you an overview of uh, the Department of Mathematics and Statistics and uh, the different degrees that we offer uh, in the department. So let me start with a description of the department. We are uh, 35 permanent faculties, uh, including 21 faculties in pure and applied mathematics, 7 faculties in statistics, and 7 faculties in math education. We offer different bachelor's and master's degrees in, uh, with different emphasis in mathematics, in both pure and applied mathematics, as well as uh, statistics. We uh, are very active researcher in the department and in uh, different fields of applied and pure mathematics and uh, statistics as well. We are involved in many uh, interdisciplinary programs uh, across the, pro the campus. The first one is the Computational Science Research Center, uh, and in particular, many of us are involved as uh, supervisor of the joint PhD program with the University of California uh, at Irvine. Uh, some people are involved in the Center for Climate and Sustainability Center. Uh, some of, bio, of our biomath uh, faculties are involved in the Viromics Institute. And uh, our faculties in math education are involved in the Center for Research in Mathematics and Science Education. And in particular, the PhD program, the joint PhD program with the University of California, uh, San Diego. There's uh, many uh, opportunities for students to find jobs across campus, uh, I mean, in the field of mathematics. In particular, they, they, many of them are hired as tutors at the Mathematics and Statistics uh, Learning Center. They can also be an instructional uh, assistants, uh, meaning that they help uh, some uh, professors in their class. And they can also be graders uh, for uh, some faculties. Um, so, when people uh, talk about mathematics, that's probably what comes in your mind, all these crazy equations everywhere, right? So then we can ask, why study mathematics? And there are a couple of different reasons for uh, pursuing a degree in mathematics. The first one is that mathematics is actually a very general, I would say, universal language uh, to be used in all sciences and technology fields. And so, for example, uh, mathematics is what is used to when you want to create some model uh, to describe real-world applications. Uh, you probably recently heard about uh, this flattening curve, right, for the coronavirus uh, situation. Uh, what what is that curve? That curve is nothing else than what is given by a mathematical model of how the epidemic is supposed to evolve with time based on certain parameters. And when they mention we want to flatten the curve, well, they change the parameter like staying at home um, and uh, show that shows that if you indeed do that then you flatten the curve so that's uh, using a mathematical model the second um, application of mathematics is uh, well many of those models are very complicated uh, mathematically speaking and they, they are basically impossible to solve in a formal way and then the only way we can uh, find solution to those models is by using some computer simulations and the way you can run computer simulation is by designing efficient numerical methods and those uh, numerical methods they require uh, a lot of mathematics to uh, be able to design them so that's why learning mathematics is also a very important uh, aspects if you are interested into uh, computer simulation. Uh, the last one is uh, there are out there some problems that are still unsolved. We don't know how to solve uh, very particular problems and in order to move forward into how to solve those problems uh, we need to develop new theories and those new theories they require some uh, mathematics, uh, the mathematical language uh, in order to be able to write such theories. So another important aspect is that the uh, job market is actually very good for mathematicians right now. And so here are a couple of examples. And the, the uh, salary that you see uh, in parentheses, that's the early career median salary that you can get, those different careers. And so a lot of cryptographers are uh, uh, hired these days. Uh, mathematicians, I mean, directly doing math for different types of problems. Uh, I also buy many companies. 
computer and information research scientists uh, are widely used. I mean, all those big companies like Google, Amazon, Netflix, uh, they, they have to uh, do a lot of information analysis and so they hire a lot of mathematicians to do this kind of uh, project. Uh, in economics also, uh, mathematicians are widely used, uh, for example, to model and uh, try to predict the behavior of the market. Uh, that's, of course, if you can predict that some stocks will uh, go high, then, okay, let's buy it, <laughs> earn some money. And this list is, of course, uh, non-exhaustive. There are many, many, many different uh, type of jobs that uh, require mathematicians. So that's uh, something uh, that is really important. Uh, also, if you are interested in uh, pursuing a more advanced uh, acad academic degree, uh, mathematics can open the doors to many uh, master and PhD programs, and this not only in mathematics actually, uh, but in almost any uh, field of science, uh, the, the different master and PhD programs, they accept uh, mathematics students. And the reason is again, because um, mathematicians, they have a very generic language and they can deal with any type of equation, uh, which is independent of what type of field. So that's uh, also a very important aspect of mathematics. And last but not least, but it's pretty fun to do some math and we will be able to show you that in our department. So let me now go through the different uh, degrees that we propose in the department. The first one is the Bachelor of Arts in Mathematics. So this one is basically the pure math degree that we have. And the numbers that you can see in parentheses, so the first, um, set of numbers is corresponds to the number of units that is required for the pre-major. So that corresponds to lower division classes. And the second number is the number of units for upper division classes. So that's for the major, uh, including the all the requirements and electives. So the Bachelor in Arts in Mathematics, as I said, is uh, more towards a pure mathematics. Then we have three different uh, applied mathematics uh, degrees, a Bachelor in Science in applied mathematics with three different emphasis. The first one is an emphasis in applied mathematics, so in a general way. So the idea is that in this degree, you are asked to take uh, different classes which cover different type of fields in applied mathematics. So that gives you a broad uh, set of tools in applied mathematics. The second emphasis is an emphasis in science. So let's say, for example, you are a, a math major, but you have a, a strong interest in, let's say, physics or biology or chemistry, uh, then, and you want to take uh, some classes which are related to that field. So then the emphasis in science allows you to do that in the sense that among the 36 uh, upper division units, you are uh, asked to take 12 uh, units, meaning four classes, in a science of your choice. That could be, again, physics, uh, biology, chemistry, or other type of science. Uh, the last emphasis in, for the BS in applied mathematics is the emphasis in computational science. So this one is really more uh, focused on um, numerical methods and how to design efficient methods to run uh, computer simulations. Next, we have the Bachelor in Art uh, in Mathematics single subject teaching credential. So that's for people who are interested in math education and who want to become teacher in the future. The, we have a Bachelor in Science in Statistics with a different emphasis. So the, the first emphasis is in statistics in a general way. The second one is an emphasis in actual science. And so this one is in particular if you're interested in uh, finance and business. Uh, that's the one that you might want to pursue. The last emphasis is the emphasis in data science. And again, I mean, all those companies like Google, Netflix, Amazon, uh, for example, on Netflix, when you rent a movie, uh, then the system is recording uh, what movie you are, rec you are uh, selecting. And based on the different movies that you are watching, the system is capable of analyzing that data and be able to then propose you uh, new movies that eventually you didn't have in mind, but who might be in your interest. And so uh, there's a lot of uh, statistics uh, used in this type of algorithm. And that's the purpose of this uh, Bachelor in Science. We also have uh, two minors in the department, so a minor in mathematics and a minor in statistics. Uh, that's for uh, students who eventually come from other majors. Uh, 
but also, uh, if for example you are a math major, you can also do a minor in statistics and vice versa. If you are a stats major, you can do a minor in mathematics. That, that's also possible. And the last uh, line is, uh, it's not exactly a degree, it's uh, the single subject mathematics certificate. So that's for people from a completely different uh, field of than mathematics who are interested to teach mathematics at the high school level. And so they can uh, pursue that certificate in order to be able to teach uh, at that level. So that's for our different uh, degrees in the department. Let me give you a couple of resources that we have in the department. And the first people that you might want to talk to are the advisors in the department, because we are able to give you a, a lot of information regarding the different degrees and which one might be more adapted to you, what you are uh, expecting uh, in terms of career. And the first advisor that we have is uh, Professor uh, William Zanner. Uh, so he is part of the uh, math education team. And so he will be the advisor for uh, all uh, degrees related to uh, teaching, so all single subject degrees. That's the person to go to. Professor Barbara Bele, she is the advisor for all degrees in statistics. And Professor Bruno Marinko and myself, we are the advisor for both uh, pure and applied mathematics. So if you have any question relating to those things, this is the person you want to uh, contact. Uh, some other resources that uh, we have for uh, students who are pursuing a math degree, a math or stats degree, is the first, the Math and Stats uh, Learning Center, which is located in the library. Uh, this center is a very nice place uh, to get help uh, for your different classes. Uh, in particular, let's say you have some issues with you have some trouble by solving your homework. That's the place where you can go because there's always uh, several tutors available there. And uh, you can just ask for any help you, you want. Uh, it's also such a nice environment that many of us are actually holding our office hours uh, over there because it, it permits a very uh, nice uh, interaction with students. So that's something that you really want to uh, check if you become a math or stats uh, major. The second uh, center that we have, it's a center which is managed by the College of Sciences, and that's the Student Success Center. And in this center, which is smaller than the math and stat stats learning center, uh, in this one, you can also find a couple of tutors there. So if you have uh, some, you need some help, uh, you can also reach them, uh, but also they are doing a lot of advising, and in particular for what I would say, the basic advising, um, like uh, when you are, uh, you need some advising regarding calculus uh, uh, classes, uh, general education classes, and these kind of things, uh, you can definitely go there and check with people at the Student Success Center. So uh, let me now give you a couple of, uh, uh, example of the type of research that we do in the department because we are very proud in our department uh, in involving students in our research. Uh, every year we have plenty of papers uh, published where students are uh, co-author of those papers. So they are actively involved in our research. And so we have uh, people doing research in many, many different fields. Uh, and I'm listing a few ones here and in the next slide. Uh, for example, we have uh, one of our faculty is uh, doing some uh, radar and hypersensitive sensor technologies. So he develops uh, some nonlinear dynamical uh, theories to develop new sensors, and that's a collaboration with the Navy, and in particular with the research labs at Point Loma here in San Diego. Uh, we have people who uh, study nonlinear waves and water waves. So, for example, that how can you model a tsunami, right, and, and see what what is the impact of a tsunami. Uh, some people work on superfluidity and matter waves. We have several uh, biomathematicians in the department, uh, like in the example uh, on the right, uh, that's uh, a result that they recently published about the how um, micro, uh, uh, macro algae are behaving uh, in, in the ocean. And so they, they study this kind of uh, data to better understand the biology. Uh, some people work in condensed matter physics, and that's a topic which is uh, very important to develop uh, nuclear fusion reactors, for example. Uh, some people work in nonlinear optics, and here the idea is 
how do, do the uh, light propagate uh, inside a nonlinear medium and what kind of property can we find, uh, what could be the application of this. So that's for the first slide. The second slide, um, uh, there are a couple of examples in image and signal processing and that's something that I personally work on. So, uh, for example, on the bottom left, you can see uh, those different signals. Uh, they correspond to signals that are recorded from different sensors that are on the scalp of a person. And so that basically records the electrical activity of the brain. And the analysis of those signals are very important because they permit to characterize many uh, brain diseases. And in particular, uh, for epileptic uh, patients, uh, it's, there are two, two very important questions. The first one is, uh, well, first, we want to better understand uh, what are epileptic seizures, how do they propagate in the brain, and all those kind of questions. And the second one is, uh, can we predict uh, a seizure, and an upcoming epileptic seizure? Because that could have a very huge influence on how people can take their uh, medication uh, to, for, for the for the epileptic seizures. So that's a very important question. On the bottom uh, right, you have uh, three different image processing examples. Uh, the first one, the one on the left, the texture segmentation. The idea is that some images have different type of textures and we want to find algorithm which automatically uh, detect the different regions corresponding to different textures. And this type of algorithm has many applications in, for example, uh, for defense application, uh, like uh, camouflage target detection, uh, but also in medical application, like uh, in uh, X-rays uh, for the detection in, uh, of uh, breast cancers. Uh, it's uh, the detection of a tumor. It actually corresponds to do some texture analysis. So all those algorithms are uh, very important. The, the example in the middle, the turbulence mitigation, so you can imagine that the image on the top is just one image from a sequence. And so imagine uh, that you look very far away when uh, during a very hot summer. And what you see is that the image is moving, uh, it's very blurry, uh, but you want to retrieve a clean picture of what you observe. And so we designed some algorithms which are capable of mitigate uh, both the geometric distortion and the blur inside the image, and you get a result like the, the image on the bottom. And the last example on the right, uh, that's still uh, uh, related to atmospheric turbulence. And now we want to detect a moving target uh, within the atmospheric turbulence. And here, uh, the image on the top, it, uh, somewhere inside this is hidden the movement of the moving target. And uh, of course, it's impossible to detect it. So we designed with, uh, actually with a couple of undergraduate students, uh, we design an algorithm which is capable of detecting the actual movement of a target. And that's the image that, the, I mean, the red blob that you see on the bottom image. So that's for the image and signal processing applications. Uh, we have people who are working on the climate modeling, and that's the example on the top uh, right. So the idea here is they have uh, different data uh, like the wind, the rain, and all those data, uh, and they want to model the um, behavior of a storm, for example, uh, using those data. And so they develop a mathematical model, and they have to solve those models, numerically speaking, and then to be able to interpret uh, what those models are pro providing, and then check if that corresponds to what was observed uh, in the real world. And the last uh, example is in math education, and that's the, this uh, brand new project that is starting right now with our colleagues, uh, uh, Marie Pilgrim, Daniel Reynolds, and Bill Zanner, uh, who just got this grant uh, to study the mathematics persistence for inquiry and equity. And all those applications basically involve uh, undergraduate students. So that's uh, something that you can uh, be involved in very easily. Uh, just to finish, I want to give you uh, a few more um, resources. So if you want to learn more about our department and the different degrees that we have, I will recommend that you go to the department website, which uh, this is the address, which corresponds to that QR code. So if you have a smartphone right now, 
you have a couple of seconds, you can just take a picture of that QR code and it will lead you to our web, uh, website. And on the website, what you can see is the menu which is given below the QR code. And in particular, there is a section about the undergraduate programs where you will see uh, a more detailed description of the different degrees that we propose. And for each degree, you will also find uh, which advisor is associated with the degree. Uh, you can also find some information about the graduate programs. Uh, you can find uh, all the different courses that we propose in the department with a short description of each course. Uh, then on people and research, you will find the list of all faculties and what are their different research interests. And finally, there are a couple of department uh, resources available. So that's it for my presentation. I hope uh, we will hear uh, from you. And again, don't hesitate to contact the advisors because we will be more than happy to uh, answer your question. Thank you.